الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and they not accept on the state of Islam. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful bestow upon us the gift to die on the state of Islam. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places and occasion in his book give the glad tidings to the believers. Give them the great news and the glad tidings of his mercy, of his infinite mercy, of his generosity of his being subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguarding them, watching over them, caring about them, showering them with his blessing and mercy, giving them the glad tidings of his bounty, giving them the glad tidings of the eternal bliss that he subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for his righteous servant. And the glad tidings, as we say, al-bushra, al-bushra. Al-bushra is bisharatun, Al-Bisharatu takunu min al-mukhbir The glad tidings from the one who bear The bearer of the glad tidings And the one who receive the glad tidings It has this effect in one's soul Of joy and peace and happiness Why? Because the glad tidings is related to something That make this person happy And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Given us these glad tidings The believer, the believer By these glad tidings Should really to give them that sense of joy and inner peace and tranquility. Because the one who's speaking is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here, when you're thinking about such a thing and we're reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true question here is to look within ourselves and see how much effect the glad tidings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book and being conveyed by his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, is affecting us in our life, is changing our behavior, is, is orienting our way in a way to have a very active, dynamic life filled with tranquility and inner peace and engaged in this life with enthusiasm and optimism. And that's what the, the glad tidings should do. Because when someone gives you good news, you feel good and you feel like, subhanAllah, everything joyful, everything is beautiful, everything is enlightened around you. However, when you think of such a thing, uh, you say, subhanAllah, is there such a thing? Because when we look within ourselves, when we read Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he's saying in the Quran, قال, uh, one of the ayat, وَقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ مُلَاقُوهُ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ مُلَاقُوهُ وَبَشِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And invest in goodness for tomorrow for yourself and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that you're going to meet him and give the glad tidings to the believer and when you think about it how beautiful it is so the believer when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said know that you're going to meet your Lord this is the greatest of the thing it's not like meeting that you're going to be scared because you're going to be you did wrong but if you're really trusting Allah holding fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this meeting is the greatest Thing that is going to be in your all, all entire existence. That's why he said, "Qala wabashir mu'minin," and ordered the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, "Wabashir amanu wa amilu salihati anna lahum jannat tajri min tahdi al anar," and give the glad tidings to the believer and act in righteousness that they have this guardians of bliss, and there with the the river flows and so on. Wabashir al mu'minin bi anna lahum min Allah fadlan kabir, and then give the good news, the great news, the glad tidings to the believer that they have from Allah the greatest of the bounty, the greatest of the grace, the greatest of the blessings in this life and the hereafter. So, who speaking is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Does it really has an effect with ourselves? Does it really turning this sorrow that we have and this anxiety into happiness, into tranquility? Because if you truly regard the 
the glad tidings of Allah, the good news of Allah that subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in his Quran, and we really reflect on them with yaqeen, with certainty, then certainly you're going to live the life that I have described. And this is the life of the believers, the true believers, that's how they live their life. Now, when you look at the people in their dealing with this worldly life, many of us, or most of us, or all of us, when we look, subhanAllah, how people, they live in their life, they live, they really, the glad tidings give them this sense of happiness, give them this sense of joy. But this joy and happiness does not last. It wear out. It's very short. It's like an ecstasy. It's a pleasure that really does not last long at all. Actually, it's very short. Why, when you think about it, for example, take the example, someone who's studying for 20 years or studying, subhanAllah, long to, to get a degree that is going to make him, you know, to, to be, uh, help him to accept or help her to accept to, to a certain great position that they dream of. So the glad tidings is going to really rejoice them, it's going to, to make them happy. But when you think of it from a worldly life perspective, you're going to find like what really make them happy. What really make them happy? What really make them happy is the achievement. They achieved. They worked hard. And this is, subhanAllah, the price of the achievement. We had this, this, you know, glad tidings that we passed. The other thing, the other thing, there are two things in the dunya. Every glad tidings will, will confer to the person, uh, you know. So the first thing is to have that sense of achievement, which is like, feel like rewarding. Make a person feel happy. The second one is like a key. It give you a key to be, to give you, allow you to dream for the next step of what you wish. Now someone has a degree, now you think about a great career. And it does not long at all. Why? Because when he start to think about the next pleasure that he want to get from the thing that he's longing to gain or to get or to hold, that's it. He had himself to be clothed with anxiety and problem and worrying and the depression. Subhanallah, why? How are we going to get it? If someone just right now, he gets like a phone call that he made a profit on the investment of the share that he has, let's say a million dollars. He is so happy, he's going to even throw a party. But then he's going to call back, he said, can you invest that profit and everything again? Why? Because he's longing to have more. As soon as he invested, subhanAllah, he made himself to be like worrying. What if he's not going to be having profit like the first time? So that joy of the glad tides does not last in the dunya. That's why uh, the Prophet Sallallahu taught us that the son of Adam, the child of Adam, he's always seeking, Qala, لَوْ min If he's been given two valleys filled of gold, he will be seeking to get the third one. Why? Because it's always what is the most beautiful, what's going to give you the joy, the real joy, is the next thing that you're going to have. Even subhanAllah, people trapped in the world of the secular world and the world of the consumerism, it's always the next thing that is going to make you happy. So the glad tidings, even people who love the toy, the glad tidings is like the new game or the new device or the thing. So it's like make them so happy. As soon as they get it in their hand, is that the next thing. It's not the case of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not. So you find subhanAllah, human being in this life, how they live. They live from like stations, position of glad tidings. When they get the good news, they get excited, happy, and then it wear off, it go down. It lasts very short, and then they will look forward. It's either power, or politics, or studies, or position, or fame. All of it is the same. All of it is the same. Now, when you make your, the glad tidings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have it into your heart that is going to have this effect in you and change you, then what are you going to have as a result? Joy and happiness and tranquility becomes something embedded into your nafs. Worrying and sadness is something, subhanAllah, is going to pass like, like a cloud, like a storm. It comes and goes. That's why the Prophet, وسلم, he taught us the dua, for example, he said, dua to remove anxiety, dua to remove the worry. Why dua? Because you already have the element the basics of joy, so your inner self is already structured on joy and happiness. So the one, subhanAllah, who structures his nafs, his soul 
on that subhanallah the toys and this dunya and this very short happiness that related to the glad tidings of the worldly life wallahi if he read this dua a hundred times it's not gonna have any effect on him why because he does not have the structure he does not have the structure then when we say then let's ask ourselves if we be sincere to ourselves because we have to be sincere to yourself you have to is a is imperative for every one of us if not we are heedless people we are away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to be sincere in this case is to ask yourself when i read the glad tidings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it does has an effect on me does really make me happy does really make me like subhanallah longing to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does really help me to when i read the dua to remove my anxiety i feel that sweetness in the salah right then when i say it it does does it then we'll ask ourselves what is really holding us off from have not having this feeling why this glad tidings from allah allah al-alim al-khabir al-hakim al-hayy al-qayyum the one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala la yudkhilannahum mudkhilan qala la yurzuqannahum rizqan hasan allah will will give them the great of provision وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ وَخَيْرُ الرَّزِفِينَ He'll give you the best of the provision, the bliss, the eternal bliss, because Allah, He is the best of the provider. And He has the power, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Allah. لَيُدْخِلَنَّهُمْ مُدْخَلًا يَرْضَوْنَهُ He'll admit them and have them to have an entrance that they will be pleased with. Because Allah knows what you love, knows what you like. You know, one of the amazing ayat in Surah Al-Insan, Surah Al-Dahr, قال ويطاف عليه بآنية من فضة قال وأكواب قدروها تقديرا. you know the, the, the meaning of the ayah when you give the cup to pour for you the drink they pour for you exactly what you love to drink so when you drink it you will not have any extra drop on the cup this is the تقدير of Allah so it gives you the maximum of the pleasure in every bit that you live into the bliss in his رحمة سبحانه وتعالى so this is, if it does not make you happy and does make you, subhanAllah, to be, to be attached to it, then, then we have to work on it. We, we have to find why it's not happening. Why it's not happening. Now, if we try to dig into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to try to find what really makes us to be, you know, uh, affected in a positive way by this bishara, so it makes us to have an optimism, all our life and to have to be our base is the base of joy and the base of tranquility and if there's anything is like a storm or a cloud passing by with the dua with the coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling you like a principle in the Quran do not worry it's with the remembrance of Allah that you'll find satisfaction into your heart so you have the key but it's not happening it's not happening because people are to have themselves trapped into this ups and down of this worldly life. Therefore, it's like they imprison themselves into the prison of worry and anxiety. So they cannot have, when they read the Bishara from Allah, it does not make anything. Now, the answer, one of the answers in the story of Yaqub alayhi salam, when the bearer of the glad tidings came to him with his, or his older son, he cast the shirt on his face, قال, and he regained back his insight. What was the first thing Yaqub said? قال, ألم أقول لكم إني أعلم من الله ما لا تعلمون. Did I not tell you that I know from Allah that you do not know? Which, subhanAllah, according to Ahl Tafsir, he was waiting for yours for four years. Forty years. And he never lost hope. So subhanAllah, the, the yaqeen, that certainty in the fulfillment of the wa'ad of Allah, of the promise of Allah, who gave him, subhanAllah, strong. Even before that, what he said, قَالُوا تَفْتَأُ تَذْكُرُوا يُوسُفَ حَتَّى تَكُونَ حَرَضًا أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْهَالِكِينَ You're going to still keep remembering Yusuf till you're going to kill yourself. What he said. He said, I only complain my anguish to Allah, not to you. So subhanAllah, if you have any sorrow and you run back to Allah, Allah is going to make that sorrow sweet into your heart. 
with the sujood, with the dhikr. So Yaqub alayhi salam, despite the fact he's missing his son, but his life was, subhanAllah, embedded in it, that inner joy. And then when he said, Qala inni la ajidu riha Yusuf, when the caravan departed, he said, I truly, I truly find the smell of Yusuf. What they said, subhanAllah, they make him a senile person. Qala lawla an if you're not going to say I'm weakened, only like you're not going to reject what I'm saying. Qalu tallahi inna kala fi dalalik al qadim. Say, by Allah, you are in your old delusion. They call it delusion. His own family. That's why he gave them a great lesson. Said, I didn't tell you, I know from Allah what you do not know. Therefore, Yaqub alayhi salam, he had the word. And amazingly, what was the promise from Allah? How he had get the promise from Allah that he going to have Yusuf alayhi salam back? Who kept him? And remember, Yaqub alayhi salam, by this bishara he get from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Yusuf is coming back. I mean, the bishara, he was not, it was not a surprise, he was waiting for it. Why? Because you know that Allah is going to fulfill his promise. So this steadfastness, what it gave to Yaqub, it gave him sabrun jameel, beautiful patience. Qala fa sabrun jameel. Because he had yaqeen in his heart. He gave him truthfulness in being confident in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree. It gave him truthfulness in his tawakkul and reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It gave him full submission to the decree of Allah and to the way of Allah, which has helped him to get nearer and nearer to Allah, then reflecting more, as a result, more tranquility in the nafs, in the soul. How Yaqub alayhi salam had this certain promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll be surprised. It is in the Quran. It was the dream of his son. That's his, that's his certainty. That the dream of his son, it was the sign for him from Allah that he's going to get back his, brother, his son Yusuf. So... What it really we are missing if you look in the ingredient of the life of Yaqub in holding firm and having that inner joy being reserved and everything that was like a cloud, you know, that worry, that things, it all subhanAllah it was passing like a cloud. It's not something that is embedded because the person who does not have this element of Yaqeen in his heart, of certainty, of the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the... The, the, the joy is something that passes. What has embedded and becomes like rooted in himself or herself is like the depression, the anxiety. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called hayat dank. So this is what part be subhanAllah, part of their own soul. So when we think about it, when your heart gain that certainty or that level of faith to help you be certain of the promise of Allah that is going to happen, then you're going to have all the beautiful virtue that Yaqub had. Now someone is saying, okay, Yaqub has something tangible, has something tangible, that his son, he told him the dream, and he was sure that the dream from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, to show how the reaction of the angels. So when Ibrahim, they came to him, we really like, you know, can't concern or fear in you because you are people who, who are like strangers. We'll give you the glad tidings of a learned boy. So look, subhanAllah, the reaction of Ibrahim. Ibrahim Khalilul Rahman. We're giving you Bushra. This is glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I give you the bushra of my father. I give you the bushra of my blessing. I give you the bushra of my gender. Where are you? Why are you still sleeping? Why are you still not reacting? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the example of Ibrahim. Are you giving the glad tidings? After old age, you know, being subhanallah, get over me almost. So what is the glad tidings? Look, the reaction of the angels. We give you the glad tidings with all truth. 
do not be from those who despair from the hope of Allah. Then here Ibrahim said, Who will despair from the hope and the mercy of Allah except those who are went astray? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you even something that it will be like far from what you think about. Ibrahim was over than 90 years old when he get the glad tides of heaven is hell. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you because he said, inform Ya Rasulullah, my servant, that I am the Ghafur Rahim. Then he brought you this ayah to have you reflect that what Allah has given you as glad tidings is the glad tidings of the truth. Therefore, where are you from this glad tidings to act upon it? To have you, subhanAllah, have you really surround you with the joy and happiness and everything that comes, sorrow, this is going to pass. It's not part that you're going to dwell on it or lag in it. The second is his wife. When she said, Do you think I'm going to have, you know, give a birth to, to, to a child and I'm an old woman? And look at my husband, he's like old. Look, the angels, their reaction, Are you surprised and astonished from the decree of Allah? The mercy of Allah and His blessings has been upon you, and may Allah have His blessing and mercy upon you. You, the home, the ahl of this bait. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hamidun Majid. So, what do you think about it, dear brother, respected sister? For ourselves, to honor yourself, you say, Yeah, Allah help me to gain that level of Iman who help me to value this Bishara of yours. You're telling me the Jannah is for you, but it's not having anything on me. You tell me, Ya Allah, my father, he's saying, وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا This is Subhanallah, Wallahi, one ayah. If you keep repeating it all night, you will not be able to absorb it and you will not be able to be, Subhanallah, to express your joy out of it because it's beyond what we can even imagine from how great this ayah and how great this glad tidings and how great this great news is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet, the heart are far from it. Now, what really making a veil between us and acting upon this bishara to help us be like optimistic, enthusiastic, filled, and have this joy within ourselves, part of us, is this yaqeen. So when someone is far from this yaqeen, he's going to be his example or her example like the hypocrite in the time of the Prophet Sassim. And this is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. That's why we have to share it. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking about the people who didn't want, who lagged, who stayed back, and they didn't want to go with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the expedition, and they were happy to be behind. They said, look at them, they want into heat and things. And subhanAllah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, let them laugh a little and they will be crying and weeping a lot. And they say, La tanfiru fil har, do not march forth into the heat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the heat of hellfire is more fierce. Wa la billah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us in this ayah, these people subhanAllah, who trap themselves into this worldly life. They trap themselves into uh, being, thinking that they are so wise in gaining everything good for them. So when they say this is not a good deal to go with the Prophet Sallallahu as many people think about their deen. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala قَالَ وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّ لَهُ عُدَّ If they really intended to go forth, they would have prepared for it. But here, the, the threat really that makes us really to think. قَالَ وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَاتَهُ Allah disliked for them to go forth with the believer. Which is mean, Allah refused for them to march toward his pleasure. فَثَبَّطَهُمْ He took away, so he caused for their, subhanAllah, willpower to be withdrawn for them because they invested in something else. فَثَبَّطَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَائِدِينَ Which if you think of this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refused for them to march forth for his pleasure and he refused for them to march for his jannah. Is, is really is really dangerous one. because when someone he's totally heedless of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offered you in his book then it comes a time that Allah does not want you to be to be in his path does not want he's not going to help you 
Because you've been every day, you wake up and thinking about my studies, my studies, my career, my career, my dunya, my dunya, my children, my... And then, and then subhanAllah, in the next day you're going to be crying, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I have done something for my real life. And subhanAllah, when we are distracted, this is what is going to happen. Like these people, they were with the Prophet They were with the Prophet. They see the Prophet. They know he's al Amin. They know he's a Sadiq. But yet their nafs, it was rotten from inside. And we do not want that. So when you really understand that, and you raise your Iman to have that certainty that your heart will be really understanding, absorbing what it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَمَنْ وَعَدْنَاهُ وَعَدْنَا حَسَنًا The one what we gave him a good promise, that he's going to see it. So whatever you see as a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the book is going to be for you. Just you need to hang there. Just you need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, He ordained us to rejoice the promise of Allah before it coming. Why? Because Allah always fulfills His promise. فَاسْتَبِشِرُوا بِبَيْعِكُمُ الَّذِي بَيَعْتُ Have the glad tidings. Rejoice the glad tidings. Rejoice the covenant that you have with Allah. This is the ultimate and the greatest of the success. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Go ahead and have this joy, have this happiness, celebrate this happiness. Because you already have dealt and you have a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is, it has only one requirement. Ask Allah to help you. To raise your iman. To be certain of what is going to happen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you. Allah, Allah never break his promise. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيَوْ لَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى أما بعد Dear brother, respected sister, the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not empty words. Are two words. They represent the ultimate reality. They represent the ultimate truth. Then if we're not acting upon it and changing ourself, our within, and to have been structured on optimism, on happiness, on tranquility, on joy, then then we're missing a lot. We're missing a lot. And we're going to really have a hardship in our life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that whoever who understands that, he's going to live a life as the believers. He said, those, they're going to be like waiting. It's really going to be waiting. In a state of waiting. It's like you are in a station waiting. This is how the dunya is. قَالَ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ From those who fulfill their covenant with Allah. Some of them, they already died. And the rest are fulfilling, they are waiting to fulfill their covenant. They are waiting. And in waiting, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, All my salat, all my sacrifice, all my life, all my way of life, all my way of dying is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is when you feel that, then you will be waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill for you his promise. And you will be submerged with the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ لَهُمُ الْبُشْرَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْأَخْرِ We have the glad tidings in this life. In this life, Al-Imam Al-Hassan Al-Basri Rahimahu Allah Ta'ala said, in this life, the praises of people to you, the love of people to you, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in the heart of people to respect you, to highly, to hold you with high esteem, that's from Allah. That's one of the glad tidings that Allah give you in this dunya. The second glad tidings that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned is the good dream that you see and it helps you subhanAllah to keep you active, to keep you optimist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send you great messages of optimism, of like securing you and give you safety. Qala al-ru'ya salihan Nabi Sallallahu as he mentioned in hadith. And the other glad tidings is the glad tidings that the angel will give you before you die. As Allah mentioned in Surah Fussilat. And then when as soon as you step in the akhirah, the glad tidings is like your soul is being to be, subhanAllah, celebrated. It's like, subhanAllah, preparing a great wedding for you, the angels of Rahman, covering you with the shrine of mosque and taking you, traveling you to the, subhanAllah, 
to illegal to really give you the bushra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the greatest of the bushra when you enter the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you are already submerged by this. So what we have to do is to just wait. And waiting not in a passive way, in a very active way, in a dynamic way, as the believer they used to, to do. And here there is a hadith beautiful of the Prophet Sallallahu said, Sallallahu min fadli, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his bounties. Inna Allah yuhibbu an yus'al, Allah loves to be asked. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ خَيْرَ الْعِبَادَةِ انْتِظَارُ الْفَرَجِ And know that the best of the worship, the waiting of the relief, the waiting of the glad tidings, the waiting of the fulfillment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala message for you. And I finish with a beautiful hadith. Whenever you have difficulties as a believer in this path, know that is a difficulty just passing by. And there's this beautiful hadith, Qudsi, in which the Prophet Sallallahu said, قَالَ عَجِبَ اللَّهُ عَجِبَ اللَّهُ مِنْ قُنُوتِ عِبَادِهِ وَقُرْبِ غِيَرِهِ Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is surprised or astonished and this astonishing of Rahmah, of mercy. قَالَ from قُنُوتِ عِبَادِهِ They are like this, from the despair of his servant and the relief is coming. I mean, it's very close, the relief, the faraj is very close. قَالَ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِمْ أَزِلِينَ قَانِتِينَ He sees them like in a hardship and losing all hope. قَالَ فَيَظَلُّ يَضْحَكَ Allah will continue to smile looking at them knowing that their relief is already being sent to them. So subhanAllah is like you see a student he did good but he's like so scared and the teacher looking at him and he know that he has his copy with A plus that he's gonna give it to him after a few seconds he's going to make him so happy. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قَالَ رَبُّكَ يَظَلُّ يَضْحَكُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ فَرَجَهُ أَوْ فَرَجَهُمْ قَرِيمٌ He know that their relief is coming to them. And when you think about a Lord, a God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rahim, and he smiles, that's why a Bedouin he said, قَالَ لَنْ نُعْدَمْ مِنْ رَبٍّ يَضْحَكُ خَيْرٌ We cannot lose hope from a God who smiles to us when we are in despair and he's sending to us his relief. Dear brother, respected sister, our reflection and our contemplation in the book of Allah require from us to ask Allah to help us to elevate our faith to have certainty in His word. And when you come to this point, you will have a blissful life like all the prophets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe us into His book. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to implement and act upon the glad tidings of Allah, the glad tidings that give you certain bliss, the glad tidings that give you the eternal bliss, the glad tidings that give you a good life, a joyful life, and give you the tranquility. And whatever difficulty you go through is only passing by because what you have innate in you is that joy and happiness because you have already believed certainly in the glad tidings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ مُلَاقُوهُ وَبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Know that you're going to meet him and give the glad tidings to the believer. فَمَيْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand and implement and help us to act upon it. And may Allah make our soul to be cleansed, to really be at the level of believing and having the certainty in his word. اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا أجمعين اللهم اقذف في قلوبنا في قلوبنا رجاءك وقطع رجاءنا عمن سواك اللهم اقطع رجاءنا عمن سواك حتى لا نرجو أحدا غيرك اللهم تب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم ثبتنا على الصراط المستقيم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وآخر الصلاة يرحمكم الله